we present our paper entitled Pre, Intra, and Postoperative Management of Robert's Uterus. The Robert's Uterus is an asymmetric septate uterus first described by Robert a half century ago. Robert's uterus connects functional and structural features of two classes of malformations, the unicornuate and septate uterus. There are a triad of morphologic features of Robert's uterus, including a blind hemicavity, contralateral unicornuate uterine cavity, and a normal uterine fundus. Ten years after the first description, three different types of Robert's uteri have been described. Type 1 with a large hematometra, type 2 without a hematometra, and type 3 with a small hematometra in a blind cavity. Clinically, the presence of a hemi-hematometria can cause chronic or acute pelvic pain. Abnormal uterine cavity shape and volume may be associated with poor reproductive outcomes, similar to the complete septate or unicornuate uteri. Previously, the most common treatment were irreversible surgeries, including horn resection and endometrectomy, with loss of the potential to improve uterine cavity shape and volume for such a condition. The Robert's uterus is considered as a unique anomaly. Its prevalence may be underestimated due to misdiagnosis. Where laparotomy and a laparoscopic metroplasty have been performed, recently a case with a small hematometra treated with ultrasound-guided metroplasty with a hysteroscopic approach and normalization of uterine cavity shape and volume have been described. The main objective of this video article is to demonstrate a minimally invasive approach and management in three different types of Robert's uterus using 3D ultrasound and differential diagnosis and surgical planning, transrectal ultrasound guided hysteroscopic metroplasty, sequential balloon anti-adhesion therapy, and 3D ultrasound in postoperative assessment. Preoperative diagnostics are a crucial step for appropriate management. Hysterosalpingography or hysteroscopy alone gives a false recognition and appears as a unicornuate uteri. MRI or 3D ultrasound are accurate tools for diagnosis as they allow a visualization of external and internal structure of the uterus. 3D saline infusion sonohysterography is helpful for understanding the internal structure, especially when endometrium is not clearly visible and may confirm the lack of communication between contralateral cavities. The cervix looks anatomically normal. In women with intact hymen, it may be diagnosed using transrectal three-dimensional saline infusion sonovaginocervicography. The external fundal clefts, greater than one centimeter indicated by the red arrow and narrow attachment of the pedunculated horn, is suggestive features for the differential diagnosis of the unicornuate uterus. The external cleft, less than one centimeter, indicated by the red arrow, or its lack, and wide attachment of the horn and a single uterine body are characteristic for the Roberts uterus. The important point in surgical planning is measurements of distance between two cavities indicated by the yellow calipers. Robert's type 1 uterus with large hematometra usually gives acute symptoms and may require fast-track surgery. Using 2D ultrasound on the sagittal and transverse sections, one can see a large fluid space next to the endometrium. 3D sonohysterography with different render modes confirms the diagnosis. The procedure is performed using transrectal ultrasound guidance in the beginning and end of the resection, in contrast to transabdominal ultrasound, which seems to produce poor images. A conventional transvaginal ultrasound probe, oblique hysteroscope, resectoscope, and Collins electrode are the basic equipment. The key step is to find the thinnest place of the septum and determine the position of the electrode. In the next step, the initial incision is performed. A 
A connection between cavities is subsequently enlarged by lateral, midline, and fundal septum incision. In the final step, transrectal ultrasound is used once again to check the fundal myometrial thickness to prevent excessive incision of fundal myometrium. The goal is to achieve a fundal uterine wall thickness between 0.6 and 1 centimeter with a semi-normal uterine cavity at the end of the resection. The healing lasts between 6 to 8 weeks. However, adhesions between incised tissue may worsen the surgical results. Hence, one week after surgery, a 7 French Foley balloon catheter is placed into the uterine cavity and filled with 3 to 10 ml of saline. The balloon is removed after a few minutes and the procedure is repeated once a week for a month. However, this requires confirmation in randomized controlled trials. At eight weeks, a 3D sonohistorography and automated volume calculation software are used for uterine cavity assessment. In this case, the uterine cavity volume was nine times higher. The surgery of a type two Roberts uterus is considered in women with reproductive failures. It is more difficult because the endometrium of the blinded cavity is less visible using intraoperative ultrasound than a hemi-hematometra. Continuous ultrasound guidance should be considered to avoid false tracks and possible perforation. In this case, the blind hemi-cavity was found, and in the final step of surgery, the uterine cavity had a normal shape. A significant improvement of the uterine cavity volume was observed after healing, but the connection was not persistent. In the type 3 Roberts uterus with a small hemi-hematometra, the procedure is similar as in type 1. But the choice of the best period for surgery is when the volume of blood is higher and distance between the two cavities is smaller to simplify the metroplasty. Sometimes a two-step metroplasty is needed to gain a semi-normal uterine morphology. In summary, 3D ultrasound techniques seem to be the best tool for complex pre- and post-operative management of Robert's uterus. Ultrasound-guided hysteroscopic metroplasty should be considered as the first choice of treatment as it is the most minimally invasive approach with the potential for normalization of uterine morphology and function. Long-term observations are needed to assess the reproductive outcomes in these women.